Chris the Magic Man Melon sat beside me again in the comms box. How are you doing, pal? Very good, Carl. Glad to be sat at the side here again for what promises to be another classic between one of America's best players in Billy Thorpe. Who's the lag? And Spain's greatest player, David Alcady. Small update on table two. Darren Appleton's just used the pitching wedge and nearly sent the cue ball across the arena. Miscued and sometimes you often see that and the cue ball jumps over the ball and scratches. So Things not quite working out the way you would have planned in that match. It's currently 2-2. Two -two. David Alcady to break first game. Break number one, Mr. Alcady to break. He'll be hoping for a, a simple run out to get himself going in this match. And I have noticed that when David breaks, he's breaking very soft. He's making the wing ball, five balls straight in the left hand corner. And he's not hitting these hard. This is probably around 30% of how hard David can hit them. Maybe the order of the day, Carl. Well, sometimes in some of the pool events, you know, we might play three-point rule, but there's none of that going on in this year's Predator Championship League pool event. And I'm not certain if there's any kind of penalties for soft breaking so we'll just keep an eye on that could be a little bit of a story David plays safe and he's played it well easy kick shot not easy to get the one ball safe he can knock the one ball to the side rail but then his next shot David's going to hook him again sometimes you can't do much about it you've just got to try hold on to the court tails make sure you play a legal shot Billy Thorpe lost to Darren Appleton in his opening match and um, he didn't really show up to the races, did he? Yeah, he missed a few good opportunities and Darren took full advantage. Wasn't a great start to the match between Darren and Billy, but Darren ended it very well. Attention, please. And Billy's played a really nice kick shot there against David. Not left him anything easy to go at. Well, he's left a, a great opportunity here for Billy. Yeah, that's a big mistake. That wasn't easy, as Chris says. Now Billy can just play a little soft stun into the red three. Should hold for the blue two. I've noticed a few times when Billy's under pressure, he seems to move a lot on the shot and jump up. It's important that he uh, tries to stop that. And there you see, there was there was a little bit of movement, he was quite snatchy on the cue. Yeah, I've seen a kangaroo on a trampoline still other than Billy Thorpe on that shot. You're nicking my sayings, Carlos. <laughs> Chris has got a little sheet of paper here with about 10 one liners on. I certainly wouldn't want you as my defence in court, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> so, Billy Thorpe had a pot on Chris and it's another one missed. Yeah, he's made a, a few glaring errors. Well, that was a little snatchy also. I mean, he's played it perfect, but he was a little snatchy on that. The cue fired through the ball quickly. Sometimes you end up miscuing when you do that. To be honest, Chris, I think that's kind of David's style of cue action, isn't he? Sometimes he, um, he, he is a bit snatchy. I think that's just the way he, he cues. Yeah, he jumps up and... He reminds me of a player from many years ago. I'm not sure if you played nine ball. Called Ismael Paez, the Mexican jumping bean. Yeah, I wasn't playing then, but I used to watch it back on Sky Sports when Matt Trim had the... You know, the World Nine Ball Championships back in the day, and did he get to a final? 
I think he did. He did get to a final. I think it was Fong Pang Chow who beat him. Maybe mistaken. Yeah, I think you might be right. So the Billy Thorpe miss on the one ball. Has let David in and it's job done for David Alcade. He takes the first rack. And don't forget, he's on two wins out of two, so good start. Yeah, we're just looking over at the other table, table two. Darren, Darren Appleton was in total control of this match after Niels Fyan made two glaring errors. But Darren just miscued a really easy ball. He jumped over it and scratched in the corner. There was only three balls left on the table. And from being two in front, he's going to find himself one behind. Are you going to make a comeback at some point, Carl, or just do the commentary? Be a full-time father? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm safe. I sat here watching you guys sweat it out. And girls, of course, Kelly Fisher. In this event, putting up another right, good two, showing on day scores. three. So, one, zero, one of the most consistent players Alcady. so far. Good break. Back over to the match table, Billy Thorpe. Getting the second rack underway. This table's breaking very kindly, so. Well, these have come out lovely, Cal. You can't ask for a better split than this. Well, Chris, let's not forget, Billy's not won a rack yet. Yes, and the longer that goes on, the harder it's going to get. Why on earth do you spin the ball like that? Just stun the ball back off the rail. Now he can't hold for the four. So he may drop this in and play the four past the nine. Or he may screw round in between the four and nine. He does like to spin the, the, the cue ball around a lot. And when you're playing on these new Rasson tables and the slick Simone's cloth, it's not easy to control the cue ball. As you've just seen. Billy Thorpe is you know, he's having an absolute nightmare. Yeah, he's got one he's got one foot in the grave and one foot on a banana skin. Take that one off the list, Christopher. And that's not on the list, Carl. And he's been a bit unlucky, even though he's got the snooker. The cue ball in behind the nine. Easy kick for David. And getting it safe is going to be the problem. Probably see David play this with a little bit of spin. Try and hit in the four ball half ball at very worst to put it back Attention on the please. side rail but if he does catch it then he could make it it's very dangerous he could give a foul away oh, what a shot that is what a shot that was a lot harder than it looked it was a wide angle Let's take another look at this. Off the side rail, lovely pace. He overcuts it, but the pace of the shot allowed the four ball to drop, and he has got an opportunity on the five. Missed the five by a long way. So Billy Thorpe, he's had plenty of chances in his first two matches and still yet to get a rack on the board, so... Here goes another chance. That's a good shot there from Billy. Nice little shot with left or right hand spin to get onto the seven. And he still nearly messed it up. He caught the nine, but he's okay. 
this for Billy Fox's first game on the board. At last, USA's Billy Thorpe, he's off the board. He's come a long way to finally get his first rack. 1-1 one, one on table one. There's Mr. John Lehman from New York City. He's our head referee. Nickname on tour is Wing Ball John because often when he's racking, the wing ball flies straight in. And actually, his full-time job when he's back in New York is an actor. Yeah, he's got a very unique voice, as John, very loud. Doesn't mean to be, it's just the acting. Very dramatic. But he is one of the top referees and he does a great job as do the other referees not easy to spend all day just setting balls up and concentrating on every single rack rack number three we are all tied at 1-1 one -one. Mr. LKD to break So they see the wing ball goes in the pocket. Cue ball did get kicked around the table. First glance, no real easy opening shot. Little update on table two. Niels Fyan has got a combination on the nine to get himself on the hill. Yeah, and it doesn't look like it's a real tough combo. It looks, it looks absolutely perfect. Straight in the out of the pocket, and that's a 4 2 lead over Darren. And Darren's going to be disappointed. He's had chances in that match. So is David playing safe, or is he going to fire at a bank? He's firing at the bank, and he's made the bank against Billy the Banker. And he's been a little bit fortunate because he certainly didn't play to go around the back of the six ball. I think we'll see David pot the two into the left-hand corner, screwing off the right rail and back across roughly to where the two ball is. Well, that's a poor shot. He could have gone well above the two ball, uh, above the nine ball there. But with Cannon in the nine, left himself in no man's land. He can still chop this three in the corner and I'm just wondering, why don't you play here Chris, please. would you pot it and try and get on the four, would you play an, another cannon and just take your chance? Well, he can chop it in, but he's relying on a little bit of luck to get on the four ball. He has got a safety option where he can bank the three up the table, screw the white into the four slowly in, Hooking behind the nine. This this is dangerous for me. Well, it was it was absolutely nowhere near. It wasn't close. It may look close because it landed over the pocket, but it was a good five or six inches away. And Billy with another opportunity. Doesn't want to be straight. And he doesn't want to be bridging over that six. This is a tough shot now to get onto the four five ball. Attention please. Yeah, let's see how Billy handles this situation. I think he does have a lot of cube power, so... He needs to miss the green six, and he didn't miss the green six. 
he does have a lot of Q power, but he's using a brand new Q, which he hasn't used for very long. He's only had it a couple of two or three weeks, I believe. So he's still getting used to that. And then kind of shots will find you out if you aren't queuing perfect. Looks like a safety. Or is he going for the bank? Well, that's just craziness. Craziness going for the bank there. It wasn't an easy bank. I could understand if it was. Well, his nickname is Billy the Banker. But he's zero from three in bank shots so far. Yeah, and he's left David on the 50, la 50 yard line. Can he cut the five in and cannon the eight ball, half ball? Cue ball should come back down the table. He may even make the eight in the corner. Well, he's decided to screw it, and that's a really good shot. That's a brilliant shot there from David. Perfect angle on the six. Sign of confidence, screwing that ball and missing the eight. Just needs to now make sure that he leaves an angle on the eight ball. And that is a poor shot from David. Could have done with leaving the cue ball bang on the top rail. That would leave natural position to pot the eight. Come off the side rail and be straight in for the nine. He's going to have to force this a little bit, but it shouldn't be a problem. We did see Ralph Suke miss a couple of them yesterday when he had to force the cue ball. These pockets aren't as forgiving as normal. So David LK takes a two Come here for a break, guys. one rack lead. Go and get yourself a cup of tea. We'll be back in a moment. not be held until there are no new cases. Well, that's right up there with the heat. No crowd, but who needs them? Just in terms of pure potting ability, it's just one of the best we've ever seen. Oh, my word. Incredible. What a, a power packed partnership it is. the engraving process. Welcome back to the Predator Championship League Pool. Mm. Table one, we've got mm. David Alcade versus Billy Thorpe. 
Billy Thorpe. Rack number four, current score is two to one in favor of Mr. Represented Ortiz. Team USA. Mr. Thorpe, two break. And he's come all the way to England to play in this tournament. And it started off not too great for Billy, so he needs to buck his ideas up. Straight away, no shot on the one ball. Only got a safety option. And again, he may have a possible bank shot on the one. Cross bank it into the corner pocket. I don't think he'll play it. I think he'll play safe, which is probably the right shot. May even kick this off the top rail. Play the cue ball in between the four and five ball and kick the one down the table and stick the cue ball in behind the two or the four ball. Billy Thorpe is the last man standing from USA. Chris Robinson bowed out Morning. the tournament on day one. Attention, please. With just one win to his name. And for those viewers who are just tuning in, slightly different on day three, we've brought a shot clock into play. 30 seconds per shot, with one extension of another 30 seconds per rack. You do get 60 seconds after the break. And Billy's using his extension on the push out. It's a foul, no call on the push. Oh. And he hasn't called a push out. <laughs> that is a schoolboy error. And even the referee's laughing. Well, I nearly said then. That's you, why you I said don't see me. that, but. Because I didn't know what you said. It was either Billy or Skylar Woodward who did the same at the Moscone Cup, so. Well. Incredible scenes. Over on table two, Niels Fine has beat Darren Appleton. And straight away, Dazzy's back on. And he's playing Kelly Fisher. That is an all battle of Pontifrat. Yes, we've got the number one in Pontifrat, Kelly Fisher, up against the number two, Darren <laughs> Appleton. <laughs> number two's a bit kind. Yeah, maybe his brother Shane. He's a professional pool player. He could be number two. Yeah, well... To be fair, back in the day, a few people often thought Shane was better than Daz. Yeah, Daz has got a family full of sporting pool players, boxers, rugby players, fishermen, darts players. His dad was a keen dart player for Yorkshire, Tony. He played for Yorkshire at darts. And I'm sure he's tuned into. Darren's matches. David's landed just a hair short. I mean, it's not really going to cause him too many problems, but he did like the cue ball a little bit further over. Yeah, just played that into the near side of the pocket to hold the cue ball. If he'd have played that thin, the cue ball would have ran further, but... This to go 3-1 up, and David to break. So the nightmare continues for Billy Thorpe. He played a push out, but he forgot to tell the referee he was playing a push out. Yeah, and you have to feel a little bit sorry for him there, because the tables and the tournaments that we play on outside of the matchroom arena, we don't really call a push out and let everybody know. Well, which which tournament's this? I'm intrigued. Cause you do say push out, but not necessarily so the referee can hear. Your opponent, as long as your opponent can hear. We all knew what you were playing. I mean, if that was me, I probably wouldn't have taken that. Shut up, man. You'd have been straight there getting the cue ball. Who are you trying to kid? Come on, Christopher Mellon. You'd be the first man to take ball in hand. It is cruel, though, because, <laughs> because we, did know, five, we, we did know what he was playing. I actually thought he said push, but Mr. he must Oksidi have said something to else to, to John. But anyway, it's history. It's 3-1, David to break. Wow, and that was another slack rack. But he didn't hit him. He's not hitting the break hard, isn't David? 
no wing ball John has not lived up to his name there there you see the green six rattles on the jaws and Billy's back to the table but as we can all see he's no shot on the yellow one ball and 10% more power there that six ball goes in because it goes wider <laughs> David's Stash trying to control push. the one ball and push. the two ball <laughs> Push and this time out. he's called push a push, he's making sure everybody in the arena <laughs> can hear him call the push out. <sighs> that would have been funny if he hadn't have called one again. I think the cue may have been going over the knee. <laughs> Mr. Katie, your option. Well, I'm not sure about that, Carl. This is a real easy shot to hook him. He's just got to send the one ball down the table and leave the cue ball where the one ball is. I'm not sure about this shot. Yeah, as Chris just said, there's... Well, he's putting back Chris, so maybe well, they're seeing something you're not. I mean, he's got the pink, the purple and the red there. They're like three blockers. So... I'm really, really shocked. Really shocked he's played. He's, let, he's put Billy back in there, really shocked. I mean, it wasn't difficult for David to play the same shot that Billy's played. Over on table two, as we've just said, Darren Appleton is about to break off in that match. He's playing Kelly Fisher, both born in Pontefract. Similar ages. I asked Darren if they went to the same school. He said they didn't. And Darren's one win from two. Kelly's played one and won one, so she's in a pretty good situation again. That seems to be the story of the tournament. And Billy Thorpe, well, he's having a nightmare, Chris. Yeah, he's just he's just not at the races at the minute. He's he's making a lot of mistakes. He's losing the cue ball. He's not putting the cue ball where it needs to be. And David will be delighted with this opportunity. Especially after a bad break, and he's back at the table and straight in on the two ball. Three, four, and five all next to each other, so not much to do with the cue ball. Yeah, and of course, if he does go on to win this match, he'll have played 3 1 3, so that'll put him in a real nice situation because, you know, mathematically, you can not qualify with four wins but I don't really see that happening so he'll be on three from three and probably just need one more win out of his last three so yeah and David's a real confidence player when he starts playing well and starts getting them racks running he can blow anybody away just needs to find the gap this is pretty simple for David Kelly Fisher's at the table on table two played safe but not the greatest safety shot she's ever played so Dazzy's back at the table with a chance yeah and this seven eight and nine for David to take a 4-1 lead in a race to five there's going to be four to play and Billy needs them all. David Alcade is on the hill. He leads Billy Thorpe for one. There's Alvin Ocean, he's been battling the demons. He actually sent out a public apology on his Facebook. 
for his behaviour. I don't know what... Well, he's laughing now, so that's nice to see. Yeah, he's a real nice guy, is Albin. I was speaking to him at breakfast, and I actually said I nearly replied to you on Facebook and said uh, I thought you played well, just for a little bit of a joke. But obviously when somebody's feeling down, you, you do feel a little bit sorry for him. He's a great player. And I'm pretty sure he'll get his game back very quickly. Well, one man who needs to get his game back quickly is this man at the table, USA's Billy Thorpe. Crack number six, our current score is four to one in favor of Mr. Arcady and Mr. Thorpe to break. Well, he's made the one ball, has it? Oh, he's stuck up over the pocket. And look at the difference. If that one ball had dropped, he wouldn't have had a real easy opportunity, but now he has. Decided to play a little cut break, and it's worked in his favour. And he really, really needs to get the frame on the board. Make it 4 2. And anything can happen, just keep battling away, one frame at a time, one rack at a time. But you just feel if there's something to do, he's, he's really struggling. Yeah, this is a good opportunity. Billy just needs to make sure he gives himself an angle on this purple five to get over for the green six. Well, he's short. He's OK, but he's a good three or four inches short on this four ball, five ball. Going to come twice across with a cue ball. Got to avoid the centre pockets. Is he going to be stuck on the six? Well, he's just OK. Going to see Billy cut this in with top left-hand spin. Go side rail, bottom rail, side rail, side rail, and put the cue ball onto the top cushion. It's pretty natural. Just needs to play it with a little bit of spin. Yeah, he was actually very fortunate where the cue ball finished because obviously he didn't want the cue ball to finish there. So lucky to leave him this shot and he played the shot nice. One more good shot for position on the nine and it'll be another rack on the board for Billy Thorpe. Well, it's a little tricky one. He should make it, but he's not made it easy for himself. Got to stay real still on this shot. Keep the head still and push the cue through straight. Right, gentlemen, we have a two and a half minute break. So it's 4 2 to David Alcade. We're going to take a short break. We'll see you shortly.
this championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My Aramith, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. We're not going to make this a thing though, right, Billy? Uh. <laughs> Welcome back to the Predator Championship League pool. John Lehman and Billy Thorpe having a little chuckle there in the ad break about Billy Thorpe not calling a push. John was referring to the Moscone Cup pairs match, Chris, where it was either Billy or Skylar Woodward who didn't call a push in their pairs match. Well, as we see on the other table there, Carl, Darren's taken a 2-0 lead against Kelly Fisher. Made a good combination shot there. Kelly played a good safety, hooking Darren. Darren coming out of the safety, hitting the one ball, and snookering Kelly. Rack, number seven. So we've seen it time and time four, again. Two. David to break. Katie. He's leading 4 2. What seems like a healthy lead in the race to five, it's actually not. So the minute David gets an opportunity, he wants to be trying to take it. And there you see he's no shot on the one. Yeah, not as. Not, not he hit the break a lot harder there. He must have heard you whinging about soft breaking. Yeah, back back when I Push first out. started watching the uh, the nine ball pool, when it became on on television in England, they had a speed gun. And I'd love to see that coming back. You know, the fans and the the people at home could see how hard he was breaking, and everybody loved to see who had the hardest break. Yeah, I used to like the old speed gun as well. The likes of Francisco Bustamante I used to give him a good crack. So David LK did call a push out. And Billy Thorpe, he's having none of it. He's put David straight back in. Is he playing the cut or is he playing the kick? Looks like he's playing the kick shot. Could see the one ball go in the left-hand corner pocket. Well, he's played the cut. He's scratched, has he? Well, he's left a chance for Billy. Not easy by any means. But it's certainly a chance. Yeah, and he needs to stay still. This is your typical type of shot where your Kelly Fishers, your Chris Mellins, so good at this type of shot because... They say they stay still. Attention, and, please. And that is rule number one. So let's just see if Billy can stay still. Good shot there from Billy. Played it well, and yes, he did stay very still on the shot. And he's back in it. The match, if he can run out from here. Make it 4-3, and he will be breaking. But we have seen a few times where Billy's had great opportunities. And one poor positional shot or one poor miss has cost him. Can he run out this time?
Well, he's landed a little bit straight. Can push this through. Wanted a little angle. He may be, he may be able to force this. But I think he'll push the cue ball through to the bottom rail. Doesn't want to be stuck bang on it, and that's nice. Nice little soft stun shot here for the nine ball. To make it 4-3. Over on table two, Kelly Fisher is just about to win her first rack. She's playing Darren Appleton. She trails that much two racks to one. And Billy Thorpe's got another rack on the board, so he's closing the gap. It is now four racks to three. So if Billy can just keep grinding away, get this match to four all, then pinch the match. He's one from one and that, you know, he's got a different feeling about it. Then. That's right, Carl, and David's break hasn't been great in this match. A few soft ones where he hasn't made a ball or he hasn't left himself on the one or the two ball. And Billy, he'll know that. But all he can do He's take his own chance and hope that David doesn't take his. Billy's been breaking okay, quite hard, getting the balls moving. So Rack number eight, current score is four to three in favour of. Don't seem changing Mr. anything, Mr. Thorpe. No, I need to control this cue ball. Try to park it in the middle of the table. Well, he didn't park it, but he may have a shot at the two, and he does. That's a nice little roll from Billy there because he wasn't easy on any other ball apart from the two. He's got a good chance here. Again, the two, three, four all next to each other. It's all about controlling that cue ball. So the cue ball's on the rail. It makes it a little bit more difficult, but as long as you focus on the pot, you can't fail to be on the pink four, so that's all good. And you can see the speed that he's playing at. He's, he, he's gaining in confidence every single shot. Yeah, because this match has turned around a little bit. He's, you know, he's dug in, and fair to say, David's not exactly had a, a great chance to win the match. Still might get a chance. He'll be breaking in the deciding rack. Billy needs to play a good shot here, though. Yeah, he's got to, if he's screwing it, he's got to avoid the side pocket. It's dangerous. And he's played that really well. He's played that as good as you can possibly play it. Perfect on the seven. Was fraught with danger. We're going to have a hill hill match, Carl. And the pressure has turned. All the pressure now is on David. Yeah, in the blink of an eye, what looked like it was going to continue to be a Billy Thorpe disaster show, he's turned it round. It's 4 4. David Arcade, two-time World Pool Masters champion. He's actually won two out of the last three. World Pool Masters, Chris. That's no mean feat. Difficult to win one. 16 on 24 of the best players in the world. And David's come out on top twice. Do you know who beat him in the one he didn't win? Was it you by any chance, Carl? Guilty.
he actually jokes about that I had a late invite I wasn't really playing and I flew over and beat him in the first round and he Rack number nine he said after he was set up home, four can you please stay piece? retired Mr. Arcady to break on the hill so he's got the break wing ball John has racked him up the wing ball's gone in cue ball's got kicked he's not going to have a shot I don't think he is is he going to have a he's shot he's going to be plumb oh he's not he's thrown his cue in the air his arms in the air he hasn't had a clear cut shot for victory in this match has he he's had two breaks and no shots this is what can happen to me it looks like he can make this but it must be very tight if he can't make it he's gonna have to kick it rail first I mean some viewers are probably thinking he could just jump over the edge of this six and pot it but I mean that's so hard If you can see the edge of it, he's got a good safety chance here, Chris. Yeah, he can clip it thin and play it side cushion back to the bottom rail. Yeah, and get the cue ball towards the three. This is a lovely shot, you know. This is a lovely pool shot. Well done. I think he may have left it, Cal. Has he left the edge? Can't quite tell from the angle that we're looking at. Are your eyes painted on? Not today. <laughs> ah, we're having fun and games in the com box. Attention, please. Keeping you guys at home entertained as always. I think he's full ball hooked, so he might have to put a little bit of a swerve on this. He's trying to hit below the two ball rail first, keep the cue ball there. Send the two ball off the side rail back up towards the top end of the table and he's played it to perfection that could change Billy Thorpe's day that kick shot it really could yeah brilliant brilliant kick shot there by Billy had to be careful if he didn't catch that correctly the cue ball could have slid into the corner pocket and David's now faced with a two rail kick the only problem is the four ball is in the way of sending the two down the table what do you play here Carl? two rail it pop the two in the side clear up check his hand go and get myself a cup of coffee watch this two rails hit it a little bit fat needs, needs it to sit on the seven ball has it got there Christopher? I think he's left it Oh, he hasn't. <laughs> that is so lucky. So, so lucky. He's probably going to be up behind the seven ball here, but he's very, very fortunate not to leave that. Yeah, I mean, these, you always feel like they're easy, these, but you can make a mess of these. And he has. He hasn't played that well at all. For me, that's not a real good shot. I know he snookered him, but it's very, very easy. He should have been tight up against that seven ball. Well, yeah, I mean, at 4-4, he's got his opponent hooked, so I know what you're saying. He's going to go two rails. He's going to try and pot this ball. That's what he's playing. Needs the two to slow down. Yeah, caught it a little thick. A little thinner, he would have made that cue ball would have gone up the table to be perfect on the three ball Billy faced with a golden opportunity needs to be a little bit careful he doesn't overrun this where's the pink four like I said needs to be careful he doesn't overrun it wow it's all happening on table one this is why pool it's such an entertaining game. It's fast, it's fun. And at times, it's a little bit crazy. Will he get away with it, Carl? He, he won't. He won't. Oh. And what an opportunity here for David Alcady. Well, this is, this is big moments, this. He's lost his <coughs> first match. 
he was down in this match he got it back to Hill Hill he's had opportunities he's hooked himself and now he's got to watch his opponent with ball in hand he's just praying something goes wrong a little bit of adrenaline there he's still fine I mean yeah he's as he's as sick as a Cleethorpe's donkey <laughs> oh Christopher of course, David Alcade is having a good day so far. He's unbeaten. Billy Thorpe. This match would have been one from two. And now the pressure will be on. My co-commentator's uh, chuckling away with his little one-liner. You've got to feel for Billy Thorpe there. He had his chance, didn't he? And it just... Just run all the way up the table and sat behind that four. Well, David, I'd be delighted. I think I think he deserved to go all the way. It's been a, a funny match. Obviously, first half of the match, David went 4-1 up. Billy showed a lot of grit and determination to get back into the game. But it's going to end in disaster for Billy. David, two balls away. From taking it 5-4 and it doesn't get any easier because he will stay on this table and he's up against Albion Ocean as a mini Moscone Cup battle so this nine ball David Alcade will march on he's having a good day Billy Thorpe the nightmare continues we'll be back shortly to see Billy Thorpe in action once again he plays Albion Ocean in this year's Predator Championship League Pool.